Welcome to Midnight Porch with your host, Papa Bear. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday. What's up, everybody? My name is Papa Bear. Welcome to the Midnight Porch. Um, we have a sponsor today. Um, do we have it up? <laughs> okay. Today's uh, sponsor is Luna Bear Bows and Luna Bear Boutique. Uh, it's the same company. Uh, they're sponsoring us today. Um, if anybody has a daughter or nieces or, you know, you know, a friend that has, um, you know, a daughter and you're trying to get them a gift. Uh, Luna Bear bows are beautiful. They're beautifully done. They're handmade, and they're all unique. Um, for anybody that's watching right now, uh, they do have a promotion since they're our sponsor. If you screenshot the live and participate in this, uh, in the podcast, in the comments, and you screenshot it and send it to their page, you would get fifty percent off. Your next purchase of twenty dollars or more. Um, they uh, they are very good at what they do, so you're not gonna regret uh, buying from them. Um, today we have a guest. I've known him probably mm, I'd say three years already. Um, I met him. When I first started music, uh, it was uh, the only person I knew that who else did music at that time was uh, was Brandon. He became uh, we worked together, and uh, he became Fat Girl Beats, and now he's on Dual Beats. Um, in the beginning, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out who to work with, and. Um, uh, I was added to a group chat with other artists, and that's how I met Schizo. Um, it was very cool because um, he kind of uh, pushed me to go further. Like um, at the time, I didn't know really what I was doing or how to do it. I didn't think I had the money, but he came in and it was like, uh, "I'm gonna help you, man. Uh, I'm a producer. I can mix your songs." Uh, no charge, I got you. And that, for somebody to come in like that and say they're going to mix and master uh, a song for you is big because it, it costs a lot of money. To go and record, like, you can be spending almost 100 bucks or more just on recording itself, and then you have to pay for the mix and master. So it, it, it really uh, meant a lot that he wanted to help me and three years already and we're still going hard still working together he's helped me uh mix and master a lot of my songs <sighs> tell me for you come over or come over um fuck shit uh take my take um happier happier uh, he's he's been <laughs> he's done a Almost lot of all of them. Yeah, it's it's, and the quality is just crazy. And for him to help me out is fucking amazing. Uh, my guest is um, he goes by Schizo B. He is an upcoming artist. He is a producer, a local producer, and a very good one. Um, how you been, man? Good, man. Just chilling. <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> He's not going to drink with me. Usually we on this podcast drink, but I guess I'm going solo. He's going to stick to his. I'm going to bite him in the water. <laughs> bite him in the water and the ganja. It tastes like a melted popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's so good. Hey, whatever gets it going. Um, I was really excited to have you on because to talk music is, okay. is what we both love. Yeah. It's um, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't love it, right? Yeah. Um, I 
known you for years, and what I know about you is that you, uh, you were in the army, right? How sure how long how long did you do that? Five years. Five years. Five years. Fuck! I can't open this shit. There you go. <laughs> it's a little thing, guys. Um, so you served five years. Five years. What time? What what age did you? You join when I was eighteen. You joined when you were yeah. eighteen. As soon as I graduated from high school, I left. Damn. What made you go that route? I don't know. Like that was just something I always wanted to do, and uh, you know, when I told my parents I wanted to do it, they f- they fucking hated the idea. Oh, really? Like they were not for it. Wait, what? Uh, they wanted me to go to college. Oh. And I'm like, whatever. What? What did? Wh- none of your family served, or they did, but like my dad did, my grandpa did, um, and a lot of other people before them. Mm-hmm. But he just, I guess, from him being in, he didn't want me to do it. Mm. But, uh, you know, me being me, I get it. went behind their back. <laughs> That's crazy. Signed up anyway. I was already 18, so. Yeah. Do you have any crazy s- stories from when you were in there or anything yeah. you can talk about? <laughs> what what What's the m- uh, one story that stands out to you? The one story? Yeah. Damn it, I don't even know. There's a lot. It depends, like, what kind of story you want. Because I used to party a lot. <laughs> yeah? What was, like, the craziest, I guess? I guess the craziest, like, uh, so, like, the first place I got stationed was in Alaska. Mm. So, like, that, you know, that's different. Yeah, that is different. <laughs> I fucking showed up, got off the plane in a sweater, walk outside to negative 30. I'm like, what the oh, fuck is this, bro? Fuck, man. This is a different cold. That's crazy. Like, yeah, you got to wear, like, big-ass jackets. I'm like, no, oh, fam. Damn. So, <laughs> you and that's when I got there. Like, the first time I when I landed, I was already like eleven, twelve at night. Oh shit! Fucking dark as shit. Oh really? Yeah. It were you on that time where it was just like dark all the time? Yeah. There was yeah? only like an hour of sunlight. Damn. An hour of fucking sunlight. Like what day of the time was that? When you <laughs> got to come in? It'd probably be like around. Probably like. One to two ish, mm. something like that. That's crazy. Then it just gets dark fast. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you meet people in the dark? I mean, like, you do they do they have like clubs over there or something? That's shit? all there is to do in there. Oh right? yeah, it's a club. I don't even. I mean, I would just. There's just bars. Mm. There's a bunch of bars everywhere. Oh, okay. And so what, the only thing to fucking do is drink. So what was crazy about that experience over there? <sighs> the cold for one. All right. So when I got there, right. So like I said, I walked out with a sweater. Mm. And I was like, holy shit, it's fucking cold. Um, everyone laughed at me. Whatever. We got in the van. Uh, so I, after a while of being there, I was there for like a month after I did everything. Yeah. Like being up from Bailey, getting there, got set up. I remember I got I got my apartment, my keys, but I didn't have nothing yet. Because mm, <laughs> all empty? my stuff was getting shit. Oh, shit. So I was sleeping in a fucking apartment in a, on a sleeping bag in the room because I didn't have no furniture. That's scary. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Mm, it's all dark. Yeah, that's creepy. Cold somewhere. I don't how know. Uh, how are the women over there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See. I mean, a lot of them like. I don't know, man. Were you married? Yeah, I was married when I when I went up there. Oh really? Oh okay. Is it the one you're married to still, or no, you been? <laughs> Oh no, you're not married. <laughs> so you were married then? I was married. I got married at eighteen, man. Oh shit! I got shit. married at eighteen, and uh, I was the first one to go up there. So, uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But Do we uh, have anybody who's coming? Yeah, uh, Ramon uh, Acosta says what's up to everyone. What's up, Ramon? What's going on? You know Ramon? Yeah. He's he, funny. He used one of your yeah. He is funny. <laughs> he used one of your beats. I saw. I know. I missed it. Yeah, he's he's dope. I like him. He's a, he's an he's he's something now. He's different. Mhm. Um, oh, that's crazy. So, so in regards, so after you were done with the military, how did you go into producing? Like how? Why? Because I know you were an artist and mm-hmm. you were an artist before, 
uh, you even entered the military. What made you want to do the production side? I don't know. Like, I always played music. Like I said, well, when I was a kid, if I'm playing the freaking violin, mm-hmm. and then, like, I just wanted to learn everything. Like, I played the violin, and I tried to play the guitar. Not good at it. <laughs> and then I learned the piano, and then, like, I kind of was, like, in and out of music. Like, mm-hmm. kind of, at least the playing part, like, yeah. playing music. Um, but it was just something that always caught my attention of wanting to make music. Like, mm-hmm. Get some different instruments. Not gonna lie, bro. Alright, so, like, originally, I wanted to be a fucking emo singer. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I was a big emo kid, bro. Yeah? Like, I listened Me to a too. lot of fucking songs. Like, punk rock songs, emo songs. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but I also listened to, like, rap. You know what I mean? I yeah, yeah. I, just, I like Lil Wayne. So, what... So what made you transition to that, this ad? To the what? Yeah, like, what was your inspiration, like, when it became, uh, when you got into sad shit? Because when I was in high school, oh. when it started to go in that sad vibe, was with Kid Cudi. Um, he kind of changed the game, and then Kanye West, yeah. that whole dynamic came in to where they were talking about like sad shit and it was different it was different yeah well i think before that like just listening to uh i'm trying to remember the fucking name so i listened to i don't even know what i'm saying like silver skin silver skin uh the used i listened to them a lot oh okay um i don't remember there's a lot of other bands oh okay you know oh okay but, uh, but, you know, you get the idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the biggest one? Oh, the sad. Okay, so this is where the sad, like, transition was when I found out about Secondhand Serenade. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Mm-mm. Yeah, all their songs are, like, breakup songs or sad love songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's it just, like, I think, like, any fucking teenage boy could probably relate to that shit. Because we kind of, because we both do music. We kind of have that similarity of like wanting to do love songs, sad songs. Yeah. Um, which is cool that we connect in that point. Um, the reason I like sad songs, it just it just feels comfortable for me. Right, because I think yeah, the reason is because like you know what it feels like. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what I think I do. I make a lot of songs like that because that's just how I feel. Yeah, yeah. That's just what I, you know, oh, yeah, what yeah. pops in my head. And I think that's why the songs come out good because they capture, like, the, the emotion is real. Mm-hmm. You know, everything we're talking about. It's not just, like, a made-up song. It's based off something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it based has. off some experience. I think you connect more when uh, when it's real. Exactly. It's easier, and it's easier to make a song because... I don't really dwell on when I make a song. It just takes me maybe a week and I'm, I'm on to the next because I, w- I go based on my feelings. So yeah. if I'm happy at that time, I write it then and there and then boom, I'm done because I'm never, <laughs> never happy. <laughs> um, so how many, so you just barely graduated what, last year now? Yeah, when last you, year in March. How does it feel to, to get that? Like you went in there chasing the dream uh, as soon as you you know got out of the army you went to school mm. how does it feel to get that out of the way and then have that under your belt I mean it feels good sometimes I forget I have it honestly oh really oh I'll be fucking do you know who I am motherfucker fucking wear it around my Shh, neck I went to school for this shit I'm gonna put it on a chain and wear it yeah <laughs> I'm gonna certify no, I mean I don't know bro like I don't like to flaunt it only because, like, it's mine. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't do it to prove to anybody I could do it. I did it for myself. Yeah, because, like, doing all this shit is just, like, basically kind of chasing a dream. You know what I mean? And not many people understand nah. this whole fucking... The way everything works. Yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. They think, you know... you. You, they think, you know, you make a, a good song, you just blow up instantly. And yeah. 
Yeah, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it don't it's, work that way. No. I mean, maybe if you're lucky, but it don't work that way. No. Why, why do you think... Because I've done shows, right? And yeah. you've done shows. And I always see, like, artists go, they perform, and then they leave. What do you think is... Why can't they understand, like, when you do shit like that, you're supposed to network and you're supposed to stay. It doesn't end right there. Mm. Why, why, why do you think they doesn't, like, click with certain people? Um, Just artist to artist. Type probably, thing. like, the lack of maturity. I mean, a lot of these kids are young. Mm. You know, they really don't understand. They haven't been through life yet. Mm. Maybe some have. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know their, their lives. I don't know what they've been through. Just like people don't know what we've been through. I think maybe ignorance a little bit. A little bit of ignorance. And I think for the most part, too, there's a lot of selfishness. Mm-hmm. That's what I see a lot. Because uh, when we do these shows and we go out and perform, um, you know, you book your spot and you promote to make sure you have your following go or the potential following to go. Um, what I've noticed the times that I perform, these other artists, uh, don't really promote, they go perform and they leave. And I think that's, you, you, you're losing out on potential followers because nowadays it's all, it, it's so, um, how can I say, uh, intimate. Like, yeah. people want to know what their artist is right. feeling, what they're doing, how they are, are they cool as shit. Yeah. Um, so, is somebody taking time out of the day to go to this local show and experience, you know, this music, I f- I, There's a, it's a lot of intimacy right then and there, and I feel like you should capitalize on how intimate when right. they get to talk to them, and then yeah, eventually... And eventually they become a fan. Yeah. Like I stay towards the end and I cheer on whoever's performing. And that's how. Uh, so we're at Bean, Bean Log Studios. And I met the owners at, uh, at, the sh- at a show. Um, I think it was in the beginning of a show. And I met Luisa and Ray and they were both DJs, and they were both this married couple, and they were dope. They were very nice, very, um, I don't know, just very open. And I got to talk to them, and then it, it, it opened that opportunity to be here making this podcast and them, you know, believing in me. Yeah. And we have this cool relationship, and it's like... It's all by now. Yeah, and that's what people. I don't. Know, I don't know, like. They just don't get it. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the biggest thing, like I said, is the lack of maturity. So, you know, they get a little buzz going. They get people to like their music, and like in their head, I feel like they're automatically like, "Oh, I'm a superstar." It's like, yeah, nah, bro, you haven't made it yet. Yeah, it's it's all about networking. If you're gonna do music, if you're gonna do even comedy, you know what I mean. Even something local, you need to go to these events. You need to take advantage of the opportunity given. It's just like a everyday job. Yeah. It's um, it's putting in that work. Um, and it's not just music. It's, you know, doing mm-hmm. photo shoots. Mm-hmm. Uh, music videos. And music videos, putting out content, like, just for mm-hmm. Instagram. Just stuff like that. Like, you just got to keep posting stuff. And, I mean, just being you, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, just yeah. being you. It just uh, it's just crazy, uh, but shit. We gotta keep moving. We gotta keep doing what we're doing, and I mean, there, it, it it's just crazy. Can't so, help everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're. I know you more. Well, I love you more because you're a producer and a very good one, like very good. Oh, thank you. And um. What is, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but what is one of the, a list of, give me your list of don'ts for an artist. Say they're going and um, meeting a 
We got a comment or? Yeah, uh, Ramon Sun is asking that uh, music is uh, from what ten uh, percent music and eighty percent marketing. Uh, I would say five percent music and <laughs> ninety five <laughs> marketing. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks, Ramon. Yeah, that's that's on that that's true. Don't play with him. This uh, guy gets it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy gets it. Yeah. He'll, he'll get there if he keeps doing what he's doing. I like the videos he'd be making. Um, what was I saying? Good question. Oh, my shit, my top five or top. Oh yeah. Of... So when an artist goes in there, what should be his don'ts? In what? In handling somebody that's recording them. Oh, okay. Like if they go into the studio. Yeah, I like for me, I have to get comfortable. I think I when when I see a producer get mad is when <laughs> I'm not prepared. Like I only wrote a little bit of shit. Oh yeah, you piss me off when you do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. What you mean. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, fuck, let me look through my other lyrics. <laughs> um Yeah. Oh yeah. So definitely okay, that'd probably be the first one. Yeah. <laughs> don't come unprepared mm. to the studio. Because you're playing for that time, so... Exactly. That's true. I'm more, I'm more of a go-by-the-vibe. <laughs> I feel like I can freestyle then and there. Sometimes I can, and sometimes I can't. And it's hit or miss. Yeah, yeah that'd probably be the number one. Just don't come unprepared. Mm. Yeah. What else? What else? I don't think about it this way. You go get a haircut, right? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Uh, say hi. How you doing? What you do today? Calls you in, right? Yeah, so yeah. I talk to my barber. In the chair and have a conversation. Uh, yeah, it's like get comfortable. Then you start. You tell him what you want, right? Mm-hmm. When he's cutting your hair, do you tell him how to cut it when he's cutting it? Mm-hmm. Do you tell him how to cut it? Oh, well, he already knows how I like it. Exactly, right? So you mm-hmm. already explained to him how what kind of cut you want. Mm-hmm. Kind of it's the same way. Mm-hmm. You come in. You tell me this is the sound I'm looking for. This is what I have in mind. Mm-hmm. And just let that dude get to work. No. Let him do what, you know, what he needs to do. And at the end of it, if you don't like it, then you tell him. Can you you change this? Can you fix that? But I don't like people, like, standing behind my back while I'm mixing. (laughs) Can you, like, lower that a little bit? Or, you know, can you uh, add a little more echo? Like, hey. Chill, chill. (laughs) Let me, let me vibe. Yeah, let me me get this together. I got a process. That makes sense. It's like a lot of the time, like, I just like to mix by myself, and then I'll give it to him after. Mm, that's true. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't think there's a top five, like, list. It's pretty much that, that way of looking at it. Like, you don't go tell your barber how to cut your hair while he's cutting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Sometimes. There's a reason you're coming to the studio. I'm like, bitch, I'm losing my hair. Calm <laughs> the fuck down. Uh, well, I mean, like, honestly, like, if you feel you can do it better yourself, mm-hmm. by all means. Yeah, that's true. And that's, um, you know, there's been people that felt that they could, and oh yeah, I mean, that's how that. Shut turns. up! Oh, damn, that's fucking dirty. Yeah, that turns out. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've been in that kind of situation. I'm like, skip something, do something. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it called? I I think I I would um for me as an artist going in there. F- um. A comment? Yeah, Abraham Morales says that he's been at his uh, like a uh, comment that says I'm a beginner sometimes. Oh boy, boy. Uh, I I'm think I'm thinking uh, uh, when you're dealing with a producer and you're oh to to yeah, you gotta be prepared. Yeah. If uh, just make sure you have all your song lyrics and you can make it fit. I mean, if, if you come prepared, like. You get stuff done faster, mm-hmm. so like you can get more done. If you come over prepared, that's even better because, say you wrote too many lyrics, you can pick the best ones. Yeah, so then we could actually like yeah, yeah. sit there and once it's all together, we could start fixing it. Then you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you get more done when you come prepared for the time you're paying for. It. I think, I think as an artist, you should have everything written down because when you get in there and you put on these fucking headphones. What you sound now sound like out there is gonna be different from when you hear yourself. Yeah. So it's better to just worry about less things. So that if you 
if you take the writing out of there, you yeah. can just only concentrate how you want it to sound. Um, I think I would, that would be my, be, my advice would be to an artist that would want to go in there. Um, do we have any more comments? Oh, okay. Um, thank you for the people that are um, watching right now. We're just uh, talking about artist producer shit. Um, if you have anything uh, you want us to talk about or any questions in regards to uh, artist pro producer type shit, anything. Yeah, yeah, anything. You you, uh, if you want me to wear tomorrow, yeah. If you want me to tell you your future. I can make something up. Mm -hmm. It might come true. No. If I were to tell you your future, it would probably be like, you're going to die in seven days. Or something like that. It's not real. <laughs> Beyond negative. Um, what else did I want to tell you? So. When you're... Um, What makes you, because I know you're a very good producer, right? What makes you um, hungry in the artist side of, of it? You know what I mean? Like, what really drives you? Like, for me, it's probably different in what it motivates me mm -hmm. in regards to music. Right. What, what motivates you? You know what I mean? Just honestly, the thought of making music. Is what mm -hmm. I like. Yeah? It's just what I like doing. So, like, the songs... Well, okay, so in a sense, like, the, when I, in the artist side, making songs to me is, like, my way to vent. So, like, every song I make, it's not, you know, to, to get new fans, to give people, you know, what they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, it's really, it's about me. It's about how I want to put stuff on the track. It's about how, what I want to talk about. It's, like... So you're just doing it for you? For me, yeah. Okay. You know? You have another comment? Yeah, Ramon wants to know what uh, suits his uh, favorite plugin. My favorite Ooh. plugin? Ooh. Ah, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, well, I use a lot of waves, a lot of wave plugins. Mm, but what's your favorite? Well, my favorite. Your go to. My go to. It's because it changes. Mm. So, like, recently I'm using Slate Digital and I'm using the rack. So, it's, like, it's got, like, the DG2A or EQ. Such and such like that. Mm, okay. So, Slate Digital is probably VG my two a right now. The Louis, the what? What did you say? Air <laughs> EQ. Air <laughs> Apple Motion. That's why I pay him to do yeah, my, <laughs> my music. Because <laughs> I feel like, fuck. The production side is it gets tricky, and if you don't have that ear, it's a lot, bro. You see, when I click the plugins, yeah. there's like thousands of them I have to scroll through, and you're like, this it makes me know. nauseous. I'm like, fuck that. I'll just stick to writing or like when people do watch me mix, they just sit, they stand there and like they won't say nothing, and then they'll just hear them go, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, <laughs> but it sounds good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I don't know what the hell all that is. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what was I going to ask you? Um, wh why do you make love songs? I don't, I don't know. They or la really sad songs. Love. It's just stuff I've been through, you know. Maybe I do but I feel like Because I feel like <laughs> mine is constant. I'm always making love well, yeah, songs. Yeah, so am I. Like, so am I. But like, well, well, it's just what comes to my mind, I guess. Hmm. You know. When I, I hate that my mind goes there. Exactly. I do too, but it just does. You know what I mean? It's between that I'm and not I'm even just fucking love. angry. I'm like, fuck the world. Mm. Fuck you. I do want to write a lot of angry songs. Yeah. But it just says a lot of fuck. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I just say fuck, fuck. Mm -hmm. Just make a song called fuck, and that's all you say about that song. <laughs> no, I think, because you said you motivate yourself. Yeah. Me, my motivation when it comes to music is... Um, I guess uh, I'm looking for acceptance. Um, more like I want to make something, something somebody would really love. Oh, like relatable. No, no, I want them to love me. Oh. 
You know what I mean? Like, I want to be loved, so I want to make something that... Like you're looking for, like something you would tell a girl that you really want. Yeah, something like that, something like that. I'm just looking for acceptance. Yeah. And I think music is so intimate and personal. And I feel like somebody were to like my music, that means they like me. Right. Because it's you, yeah. It's part of me. Yeah, that's how, yeah, that's Mm -hmm. how I feel. But at the same time, like, I know it's not for everyone. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Oh, no. (laughs) I've heard. I know that, yeah. It's like, oh, well. You know, 20,000 streams oh. means that there's other people that do. <laughs> I remember this one time um, I was uh, uh, doing a show and this guy, he kind of did like 80s type music, okay. but he was like, Vibing, no, like he was, yeah, he was like pop locking and drop it and oh, shit. like he, he's, he's getting it. Huh, yeah, he's getting it. but it's crazy because he's was. He was like a little kid. He was maybe 17, 16. But he enjoyed it. No, he looked into it. That's what I'm saying. That was, it, it was cool. Yeah. It just, to hear that sound. It's different. From someone a different generation, like like 30 years. Yeah. 40 years. It's cruel. Um, but I've had heard bad ones. Oh, my God. Well. Yeah, but you know. It, as long as they're getting better and they keep trying to do it, eventually they're going to get good. It's progression. Like, mm-hmm. As long as they're showing progression. I know I've progressed. Yeah, we've all progressed. Yeah. Well, no. But, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Majority of us progressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's, just, it's just a part of growing. It, when you progress, it's, just, it's you growing. Mm-hmm. And with progression like comes a change of probably like style but more like lyrics and the way you do the song changes Mm -hmm. that's true like when i like to use like my new song for example Mm -hmm. what sounds like that that i put out Mm -hmm. it's a it's this a different direction i'm going yeah which i'm probably going to stick with now and it's just part of growing yeah yeah you know what i mean that's cool to do something it's cool to do something you know you can do it's like uh you have this plan and you already put in this work and you already know what your sound is and you know you can perfect it right. and you know you can do it and it's just like to that's be huh that's all, that's that's all there is to do yeah you know it's just always perfecting ashley says hello there you go hello ashley hello ashley what Ashley Rodriguez. Hey, Ashley. She's a ex coworker. Uh, no, not ex coworker. Different Rodriguez. My yeah, best friend. The more he forgot who you were. <laughs> There's a lot of Ashleys. No, I know this one. Hi, Ash. Um, what's it called? So, uh, cause you when you do music videos, so lately these this last past, oh. you do them with a lot of girls that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> how, how does that process go when you get a girl? Uh, how how did you? Because everybody wants to charge me. Right. <laughs> like yeah, I'll be in your music video. It's two hundred bucks. I mean, I just ask honestly, and they I just show. ask, and they do it because they they support, mm. and you know they they just pretty much tell me like. You know they fuck with me and, and yeah I mean whatever they could do whatever they could do to support they're with it and uh, you know all the ones you do see in my videos like I appreciate them because uh, there would have been no other way mm-hmm. you know everything everything that's come to me is like like you said it's by networking opportunity mm. you know what I mean? that's true now I've had a few girls like um, be the song covers. But never music videos. But I only filmed one music video. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> I need to. I need to work on that. I mean, I only have like what three music videos. No, it's not bad. But they're pretty dope. Like they look visually. Yeah. Um. What's his name? The one that did mine. Emmett. The dark, Emmett. Emmett. Yeah, Emmett's good, man. Emmett. Yeah. He's been like he's been, he's been better now. Yeah, he's he's. See, with everything, there's progression. 
And I remember when he first started out when he when he filmed Bust Down. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's when he was like just starting out too, and he like he did a great job on that video, I think too. Yeah. Um, I, 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 and he just like from the stand, like just watching him like every video he's done from the stand. I'm like, damn. Yeah, he's, he's learning fast. It's awesome. Yeah, he he did my music video for free. Yeah, yeah he did one of mine for one one day one. Oh he yeah. Us up. He's like, y'all want to do a music video? I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah, that's it's smart because you know because he wanted to get his name out there. Yeah, it's and very smart. You know, Again, that's the benefits of networking. Yeah. You know, stop. networking. It, I Just hate. Don't be an asshole. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because the like artists that I've talked to, out of nowhere, just unfollow me or stop talking to me. Because they hate to see you doing good. Mm, yeah. True. <laughs> that's just what it comes down to. It's just crazy. Like, why would you? Why would you like treat that person like an enemy instead of like? Hey, I want to be part of his thing. That's let me hop, crazy. have him hop on a song, or let me have. They don't see that way, bro. It's just you know, me, me, me. Hey. Really, because that's what they see all these other artists do. So that's it's true. influence. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, it I shouldn't think... be that way, yeah. because there's a lot of like the big artists that they follow. Like they're the ones that have the selfish attitude. Me, it's all about me. But then like a lot of other artists that are dope. <clears throat> Like Polo G, and for example, and I think, who did I see him with? With the Kid Leroy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I saw them in the studio hanging out together. They weren't being dicks to each other. No, it's... You know it's, what I mean? They're like, you know, Polo G was listening to a verse recording, and there's the Kid Leroy fucking hacking them up in the back. Like, that's... That's it's how music. it should it's be. It's art, bro. It's, mm-hmm. You should bring each other up instead of bringing each other down. Yeah. It's, it's just crazy that people have that mindset, like... It's you against the world. But in actuality... It's just one genre, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. And that's why like, I'm not trying to get away from that genre because I like it and I like producing it. But, like, my own style, like, I'm turning it into a combination of different genres. But still, like, it being that vibe. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm singing on fucking rap beats, bro. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what genre I do. It doesn't matter. Like we don't, you don't have to put yourself in a category. Just oh, yeah. Make what you feel. Sometimes I want to rap. Sometimes I want to exactly. be like, beat that pussy. I did a song. Blah, blah, blah. Huh? I did a song in December called "Stay in Your Lane." No. Oh. And I just straight up rap and talk shit. True. People got mad. Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> did I told the truth. Okay. That's funny. No, I it just it just sucks that people, yeah, when, when it comes to artists that we don't just like fucking work together we're better the bigger the number imagine just imagine if everyone worked together the type of songs that would be made with the collaborations of the the, you know two good artists from the same city that'd be great but even now it's crazy like with khalid he never came back he just visits and then like in vander graham he knows Crystal Poppin', but you never see them, like, no. do a song together. No. Well, there's a story behind that. But oh, really? I'm not the one to say it. <sighs> the tea. <laughs> well, yeah. it's just something I heard from someone. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Could be a rumor. I don't know. Mm. But. It was bad, but later? Or nah. It's just management, maybe? No. no. It's nothing bad. I just. I know she came out. And, uh, she came out in one of his videos. Yeah, I, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because at that point, like, they want money involved. Mm, true. Don't want us to uh, spill the tea. Ooh. <laughs> we need to spill the tea, bro. No, that's not for me to say. Yeah, it's not I feel my you. Business, I feel you. Know you. I mean? No, I get you. But yeah, uh, Crystal Poppin is a local artist, and then Evander Grimm's a local artist. Um, they're very good. It just Crystal Poppin's on the road. Like she's, yeah, she signed to that new record label, and mm-hmm. she's fucking. She's done. But what does she have to do? <laughs> Get out of here. 
Yeah, she got out of here. She went to Houston or some shit. It's everywhere, dude. That's kind of fucking crazy. It just sucks that El Paso feels like it's fighting with itself, you know? It is, but bottom line, like, anywhere, any artist... Oh, yeah, they're going to go to L.A. Not even that, like... Mm -hmm. I feel like the whole city's not really going to support you till you make it to that level. Oh, yeah. So besides, like, until then, it's like everyone's just pretty much watching if you fail, to see if you fail. That's true. I know Khalid was pushing this shit, and nobody gave him recognition until Kylie Jenner played his song on his snap, on her snap and boom. And look where it is. It's just crazy that um, his producer... The one that helped him produce that album, his first album, uh, is still Scritzy. He's still here. Yeah, but he's another person that uh, he just does what he loves, dude. You know what I mean? He's not. He's still here. Yeah, he's still here, but he's still doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I just, don't think he's one to do it. Uh, you know, he didn't do it for the money. He didn't do it to be famous. Well, it's like if I got pr- if I got famous, I would bring you along. You know what I mean? It just I don't understand why this dude didn't do it for him, or maybe he did open doors and he said no. I well, don't know. He, I know he did. Uh, I know oh, yeah? he was doing stuff. And, you know, um, I mean, like I said, you don't know what's going on in people's lives. Uh, I do know he's still making music. Yeah, he and, is. You know, he's making he's always going to. I know that. I don't know. You know, personally, you know, I've seen him a couple times. I've met him a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, heard stuff from from people that work with them, but uh, I mean, it is what it is, you know. As long as he's still doing it, he's got a plaque in his in his room. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's got a, a platinum record That's hanging crazy. up in his room. Probably a couple he's met, you know, probably people he's. Well, that out al- of one of the, well, I don't know the album got nominated for a Grammy or he was na- nominated something. Like that, you know what I mean? He's got that and. Uh, he's, he's just one of he's, he, I mean, I don't think he's young. He just don't got nothing to prove to no one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even I don't have nothing to prove to no one. True. I don't have to prove it. It's just crazy how it all works. That's what I mean. Just do it. Uh, at this, like, in this stage of doing it, like, who cares mm. what other people think? Mm. There's going to be people that like your stuff. And who told me that? Who does that? Who do I sound like right now? It's like freaking Brandon. Yeah, yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Cool beats. You know, he's like, what does he always say? There's a million people on this freaking earth. True. You know, there's bound to be people that are going to like your music. True. So don't focus on the people that don't like it. Mm-hmm. True. No. I, I hope I get to have Brandon on here. No. Let's see if we get him out of his cave. Love you, Brandon. Yeah. What's up, Brandon? Uh, Abba Oropo says, uh, bust your cheeks. Ooh. Tomorrow's Super Bowl. I forgot about that. I can eat some wings or what are you going to do? Are you going to do anything? I don't know. Hmm? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I'm in my own little world, man. I just, I didn't even know today was Saturday. Yeah. Oh, I do know it was Saturday because you told me to come. Yeah, yeah. But, uh. I'm, I'm going for the Buccaneers. You're going for the Buccaneers? I'm, I don't know. I want Brady to make history. Nah, he's done enough. I'm going for the Chiefs. <laughs> well, because the whole thing last year was, oh, when, when he was going to become a free agent, the whole thing was, well, oh, Be- Brady's not, Brady wouldn't be Brady if it wasn't for Belichick. Or the players around him. That, but, because I, I think uh, Belichick made a comment that the reason they're winning was because of him, not Brady. Oh. And they'll still win after him. You know what I mean? Oh, they did. No. <laughs> you really can't beat him. Yeah. So that's why I, the, the reason I want him to win because it was I mean, just... I can see what you're saying, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, man. I, I've been watching Mahomes the last couple of years, and I feel like he's been working hard for it, man. And he's young, and, and uh, he plays his heart out, bro. <laughs> he, plays, yeah. he really does. And not saying that Tom Brady doesn't, but, you know, Tom Brady's like, He's ancient. Hey, he's still. He made it to the Super Bowl, bro. Like nothing against him. Yeah, yeah. I know he's gonna play good. I know it's gonna be a good game. But I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say Chiefs. Okay. Any uh, who you think the score is gonna be? I don't know. Hmm? I don't fucking know. 
I think 10 0. <laughs> nah, it's probably going to be like I'd 40. I'd say, 40. okay, if I, I wouldn't say the exact score, but I'd say it's probably like close. Maybe, maybe within three points. Damn, that close? I think probably. So. I think so. It's not going to be a blowout. That's mm-hmm. for sure. I hope not because I'll stop watching it. Well, that's that's what happened when the the Patriots played the Falcons. No, because oh well, yeah, but yeah, because they were he, it was like twenty three to three or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, I turned it off, and then I heard they were coming back. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, he <laughs> that was crazy. I was like, damn, no way. Yeah, that's funny because I used to like the Falcons back in the day. Oh really? Yeah, only because of Michael Vick though. Oh yeah, Michael Vick back then made him like cool. Back then. But yeah. Yeah, I remember I went back. I had turned it off and I went back and I watched that. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. You never know with Brady, man. Um, I was going to tell you. Um, well, I wanted to ask you, because um, doing this whole music shit, you kind of, um, you're one of the people that can be going, like keep doing it. Um, um, why is that? In a sense, or, or like um, why? Why did I keep pushing you? Because mm-hmm. I heard it. Uh, you know, I, the how fast you progressed when every time you came with a song idea, when you would show me, I'd be like, oh shit, all right. You know, and, and then uh, I think you know that's why I would always get frustrated with you, or, or oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like not get mad, but I'd be like, you know, come like, on, come man. on, sing it better. Yeah, More. and I know you like the biggest thing you do is I tell you to do it one way, and you go, okay. Then when we record it, you don't fucking do it. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. But uh, I, I heard the progression, dude. And I heard, like, the way you were going. And when you we, when we do it and then you put it out, like, the reaction. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, people were like, okay. And then uh, it's just the fact that it's different. Yeah. It's different. And that's what wins in this game. It's different. different. True. If you're not different and you sound like everybody else, you're just going to be another local artist. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, he sounds like so-and-so. Exactly. Why listen to you if you they can listen to him? That makes sense, yeah. You know what I mean? No, like, I, yeah, you can listen to your song. It's like, yeah, that's copy that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't sound won't. like nobody else. You know, but like any artist. Very good. Go ahead. Jeez. That's only it's so loud. Every, uh, like every artist you hear, of course they have influences from other artists that they oh, yeah. grew up listening to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that they sound exactly like that. Oh yeah, everybody can be influenced by somebody. Exactly. So as I long think, as you're different, dude, like just do you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Everyone's like, you walk outside, you go to the mall, like there's fucking ten dudes that dress the same way. True. So what the fuck is that? Clone factory around here? <laughs> Everybody's rebelling. Um. Because today I was hearing Cardi B rant. Because mm. she released a new song called Up. No. No? Well, she, she said fucking like five artists came after her saying they made the same song. And she was like. Because it's, it's a label thing, man. Like there are people that make these songs already. And then they should like there's there's songwriters. You go to you go to Spotify and you go to the song info. Right? Mm-hmm. What does it tell you? Like, who who performed, who produced it, who wrote how it. many songwriters. What do you see on there all the time? There's, like, fucking five to ten songwriters, five to ten producers. Sure. Not just one person. True. So, like, they got teams of songwriters that sit there and they make songs. They'll make demos for, like, certain artists. Then they'll shop it to that artist. That artist doesn't pick it up. Guess what? They're going to find someone that's similar to her and they're going to shop it to them. True. So of course they're gonna make the same damn songs and like not even realizing. Oh, I feel like it's it's so the you know the language is so limited. Of course you're gonna eventually. It's gonna be the same. By accident, right? Like, yeah, something's gonna hook. be the same. Why do you think they do remakes? Mm-hmm. You know, because you you run out of like not run out of ideas, <laughs> but like it's like uh, you can't always make something original. True. You know what I mean? There's times where... And they just go off like a formula. They're just trying to make stuff that's going to sell. That's what that's all it is to them. Yeah. So, like, you go to a label, and that's why you hear a lot of people when they go to major labels, a lot of artists, you start hearing people saying, like, that their style changed. 
Mm. Yeah, no shit. They have no fucking creative control anymore until they make it and like into like you know you're like Drake, and it's like yeah, who gives a fuck who he makes? True. He can do whatever he wants. Like, <laughs> he makes everything sound listen. good. You know yeah. what I mean? Once you Lil Wayne can make a song. He made a fucking rock album. There, there's there's people that listen to people that do covers. Exactly. Like it. That's what I mean. People don't care. Like once you get to a certain level, yeah, you can do whatever you want. But mm-hmm. like when you get signed to a major label and they're bringing you up, they're they're marketing you. It's gonna be what they want you to do. What what, it's gonna make money in their eyes. Mm, true. Why do you think a lot of these artists that come up, you know, they make a big hype about them, and then like you don't hear about them anymore after a year or two. Because like, their songs didn't sell, and they owe all that money back to the... Like, uh, what's uh, the guy that made Panda? Panda, Panda. Oh, designer? Yeah, bro, the new liner. Shit, yeah. it could have been. Could have been they, they didn't make enough, say, they didn't have enough sales to pay back the label. I was hearing, uh, what's his name? He has one eye. Fatty Wow. Fatty Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he was saying that that now he's with a new record label or doing his own thing. Now he can make what he wants. Yeah. They were kind of pushing, stopping his progression. That's why he wasn't able to uh, do what he wanted. I, I think, mean, I mean. There's a lot of artists that, that broke off and have, they have their own labels now. Do you Pusha f- T did it. No Wayne did it. True. You know what I mean? Do you feel like, say, like if we were going to get offers, that we should take it? or? I mean, I would. No, I know everyone like dreams about it. Like, oh yeah, you know, label sign me. Mm-hmm. No, it's a. Uh, it may look nice. I may look fancy. Like, yeah, hey, here, here's all this money. Go make an album. Mm-hmm. You gotta pay that back. That's true. You don't pay it back. Guess what? You don't own your songs. So they're gonna be making money off your songs, and you're gonna be broke. True. <laughs> so a lot of these dudes like they get the late that money f- from the first album contract, mm-hmm. whatever. They get all that money at once, right? What do they start doing? Mm. Got to stop the chain. Start so spending it. Good, right? And then, like, you know, they make the music. They pay for the studio and all that stuff. Get everything else done. Yeah, because I was hearing, like, uh, when they sign, like, a million-dollar deal, percentage goes to whatever state you're going to or living at. Mm. And then, a per- like, percentage goes to your management. And then the percentage it of the songs. Up, yeah. Same thing, like, with royalties. Mm-hmm. You know, artists don't get 100% royalties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, stay independent. Yeah. Stay independent. Fuck it. It's not impossible. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but... I mean, it's a lot of work, period. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's crazy. But it's like, okay... Yeah, work is work. You know, if you go to a regular job and you're working... But you don't love it, yeah, it's gonna suck. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you love what you're doing and it's work, it's like damn. No, I I, I love. Like it. you work all the fucking time. True. Like I said I do music all the time. It doesn't get boring to me. Mm. There's always something, and I don't even feel like I like. There's still new stuff I can still learn. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the way my mindset is, and it should be for a lot of people, is. Even when you think you're the best, you're not. Mm. There's always going to be someone better than you. That's true. And that should drive you to keep improving yourself. To be better, you know. Oh, yeah. You you gotta, you you, get, there's always going to be someone that, There's always gonna be someone above you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should always have that mind of trying to progress. Yeah. No, I see that. No. It just, it's... I. Well, not that I wish I knew about the whole shit. It just sometimes it's just like fuck, yo. Know, it, it's for you forever gonna have to push. Even if you share that one song with that one person, you're gonna have to keep pushing into that person because they don't know if they don't, you don't know if they saw that you posted the song. Right. If you promoted it. That's what I'm saying. Everybody's busy. It's marketing. Man. You gotta, you gotta just got it's a constant push. If you love it, you yeah. gotta keep pushing. Push it everywhere, everywhere, no matter. Yeah. Don't think local. Yeah. Globally. Oh. Globally. True. If you think small, you're gonna stay small. Mm. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, it's just crazy, like, when I started this shit, the same time Brandon started. Yeah. <laughs> it just went, it just when went, I really started pushing it, too, yeah, that's when we all started. Yeah, so, like, we that's all when I really, like, okay, at the I'm same really going to brand my name. And then I saw Fat Girl Beast. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Everybody thought he was a girl. The fat chick making fucking music <laughs> comes to my house and it's this skinny dude in yeah. short shorts. I'm like, oh, True. What's up, man? <laughs> he wears the short and shorts. It's crazy. Uh, no, I love him. It, it, it's crazy because we were working and we started talking about music and then he said he used to produce. It's crazy. Uh, Ramon says that uh, Facebook ad for sex for marketing. So what do you guys think about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Facebook ad, Instagram ad, all that. Uh, yeah, I wherever, I done a few. Wherever you can get advertisement, like do it. If you can afford it, do it. Yeah, if you can, it, it doesn't even cost that much. Like I've done like for four fifteen dollars a dollar a day. Yeah, you know whatever whatever you can afford, just do it. Like just like put money aside. This takes money, you know. That's one thing it does, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that because they want stuff handed to them, they want stuff for free, but they don't work that way. Everything takes money. You gotta invest in yourself. You gotta believe in yourself enough to invest in yourself, and and put it out there. Um, what bothers me too, like doing this shit, like me and you are doing this whole podcast. Um. They're, they're talking like the people know them. Like, oh. I I don't like that. Yeah. Like I feel like if you're in this, put in the position to promote something you're gonna want the person to love you first and with that it'll make them want to check you out yeah i mean yeah that works like uh, your, your personality oh yeah yeah because everybody makes a sad song why the fuck do they have to listen to yeah, your sad it's song emotion. you know what i mean um i don't it's, know like a lot of people tell me the sad songs i make are relatable but mm-hmm. i'm not making it to be relatable or just you know it's just something that we all go through yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i'm just saying like when it comes to doing this shit yeah um you're gonna i think you should make them like you yeah i mean that's and, anything <laughs> oh yeah i'm you just I mean? it just when when i hear the the fucking the interviews people do they're all like yeah i made this song i was in my basement started jacking off and it just came to me and it just hit me and I, they have all these fans, and it's like, bitch, nobody knows who the fuck you are, you know? That's I what I'm t- saying. I'm telling you, like, these days, there's some people that act like they're fucking superstars already, and it's like, bro, like, who are you? It's crazy. I'm like... You never heard of me. You want the people, like, X. Um, people loved him because he would go on these rants, and he would talk about life, the way he felt. Because that's who he was. It was him. It was raw. It wasn't hiding nothing. Exactly. The thing is, like, social media, like, people get on there, especially artists, like... Well, know. they don't even show who they are. I see people I show part show of their face. Are. Yeah, but I mean, like... You mean, the no. majority of it is, is fucking fake, bro. Mm-hmm. These people, like, you know, the way they put their stories and all that, like, they're living the life, but it's like, bro, you're really not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, they... they, they it's perception. They they do their stories to perceive people into thinking that they made it or they're making it and they're living a good life. But if you know them, you're like, nah. I don't know why you want to put that out there. It's that just this puts people off, I feel like. I feel like... Um, it's just because of the way the social media is and just like culture in general. Like 6 just, 9 he can do that. You know what I mean? It's He already has he, his base. Saying, it's just fucking clout chasing. But I, fucking, that's what Donald Payne is, honestly. Yeah, yeah, cloud chasing. He was, he was and a big. You know, and that's what, was, like, that's what a lot of people try to do too. But I feel yeah, like he did it right. Well, obviously, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, where he's at. Yeah. Do you think his new song is gonna be a banger? Oh, I listen to rap. <laughs> I listen to all rats. I don't give a fuck. No, I, I just like what he's. In the short time he accomplished, even though it's dirty. I just, it just, he, yeah. he took it to, I mean, and a, found his way. A fucking documentary about him. Oh, I know. And when is it coming out? Do you know? It's on Hulu. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm not sure. Tells the whole story. That's what I'm telling yeah? you. Yeah? Because I've, I've watched it. What did you take from it? 
It's just he, like I was telling you, he faked everything, you know? That's true. He took advantage of certain opportunities and made videos and made it seem like he was part of a gang and he got sucked into it and started thinking he was, but like, no. that's not that's who he was. That's where you get lost. Yeah, that's not who he was. Like I'm saying, like, uh, it, it was like an alter ego for him. And that's what they tell you. Like, he was, it, 6 9 or Takashi was an alter ego for mm-hmm. him. And it, it pretty much, like, took him away from his reality, which I think what we all do as artists is music to get us away from reality, even though we sing about stuff that's in our reality. Yeah. it It's, yeah, definitely. It's just crazy. Like, um, just to have somebody do it that way is crazy. It is crazy. And, like I said, a lot of people try to... That's probably where it comes from. Yeah, maybe. Why, try, you know, try to people try to and that's what imitate I'm saying, that. Like, everything is like a lot of stuff you see on Facebook. Um, Instagram, well, sometimes you just got to do what the fuck you do. Exactly. You, you can't follow just anybody's cheap. blueprint. Yeah. Go against the flow. Yeah, it, it's crazy that people um, don't understand. Like, you're not going to do it like him. Might as well do it your way. Choose your own path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to go your own route. You're not going to do it like... Yeah. You should know that they pushed through and they did... They gave it the 100, so you should give it 100, but you're not going to do it just like them. Yeah. Any comments? Uh, no, the the counter and then like a one minute. How many minutes do we have left? Yeah. Already up an hour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I want to thank everybody that showed up to the live podcast. Yeah. Um... Today's sponsor is Luna Bear Bows, or that's their Facebook page, and it's uh, the um, Luna Bear Boutique is their page. If you want to go ahead and follow them, they sell beautiful bows. They're, um, I'm I'm happy that we got the, a, a sponsor for today, um, and it's very good product. It's handmade. And if you know anybody with a daughter, uh, even like a single dad that has a daughter, you know, putting a bowl on a hair does a lot. You know, if you don't know how to comb a girl's hair, just put it up in a ponytail and then put a bow on it. Boom. You're done. Um, I want to thank our guest, Schizo B or Schizo Beats. That's how I know him. Or Schizo B. Um, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at schizob underscore official. And same on Twitter, except I think you had a one at the end. Mm -hmm. What about Facebook? Because they're on Facebook right now. Facebook, uh, schizob beats. 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 I always kind of change it. I have many names. Mm -hmm. Mysterious. (laughs) Um, You want to go ahead and uh, follow me? Follow the page, please. Um, I do want to make more content. Uh, I do want to invite more guests um, with you sharing the podcast. If you can, if you can share, like and share, that would be awesome. Uh, so I can grow this and invite cool people. Um, I want to get some strippers just to ask. You can invite me back then. <laughs> <laughs> if you know any strippers. Um and if uh, you want to donate to the podcast, uh, uh, I don't know my cash app. <laughs> but if you want to message and you want to donate, uh, just go ahead and message me. Um, every dollar counts. Uh, if you want to feed this guy a uh, dollar a day, a penny a day. I was kidding. <laughs> um, but thank you for watching. Uh, this is... The Midnight Porridge, and I'm Papa Bear. Have a good night.